yeah, it's quite remarkable. Maybe because it's small, but Mexico is small. <laughs> no, no, uh, this area, Tolo. Oh, that area, it, it's different, right? From from uh, Mexico City and everything else, or I haven't been in Mexico City, so I I don't know. I've been in Puerto Vallarta a long time ago. No, this area it's like Cancun, Playa del Carmen, and 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 Tulum. Right, and they decide and, for themselves. It's not like there are some uh, regulations, uh, federal. It looks like, you know, everything is free, and you can you can just go around without a mask, and nobody's nobody cares. How long it's going to last, I don't know, but. That's how it is now. But also, there's not dense cities. These are like not very populated area. So um, it's different than Mexico City or Guadalajara, which they have large population. So they're not enforcing it, and and I'm going along with it. Nice. Right. And it looks like the tourists that's coming. You know, we have constantly having people come from all over the world. I mean, I have not seen a sign of things slowing down. Everything is like busy. The hotels are busy, resorts are busy. Um, event, there's all kinds of events constantly happening and uh, people coming from all, all over the world constantly here. So That's yeah, great. yeah. so it's, it's very easy to get here. All right. Good to hear. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, so back to the Yanni and the relationship with your sat guru. Somebody asked the question, how can we meet our sat guru? You can't. Who asked this? Okay, I need to. Let's try it again, see if we can. How about this time? All right. You, you can't meet your sad guru. That's not something you decide. It appears on your way. So it's not like I decide today that, okay, I want to go, go find a Yanni. That happens when spiritually you are ready and, and the guru fishes you out. That's how it happens. And the guru or the sad guru that you connect with, not necessarily it's the same teacher for other people. One of my very first so-called gurus was Osho. I, uh, through my very close friend, I got connected to Osho. But uh, Osho died as soon as I got to be connected to him. And that led me to Papaji, to Punjaji, which it was meant to be there because Papaji was teaching Advaita Vedanta. And that teaching was all a non-dual teaching. It was all about silence. It was all about being still. Osho's teaching was a lot of doing, doing things. Although he knew what was going on, but he was catering to a much larger audience. He was speaking a language that a lot of Westerners around the world could understand and relate to. So he was playing with sexuality a lot. Osha played with a lot of psychotherapy, working on yourself, your past, your relationships. He created a commune in Oregon, which fell apart. He was playing with those things. Papaji was really like laser sharp focus on silence. So a lot of people were not attracted to that teaching because it's, it's, 
it's very advanced and it's just one thing. It's not an entertainment center. Osha was entertaining, but it was bringing a lot of people, bringing them close to the fire. So, and I feel that it was pure grace that I came uh, to this particular teaching because when I met Papaji the first day, because for me, it was like, I like partying, I like drinking, I like smoking, I like sex, I like all these things. And I was like, and I like meat. I didn't want to be vegetarian. So I thought when I go to India, like, and I have to give up meat, I have to give up sex, I have to stop drinking, I have to stop smoking. Some of it was easy to give up, but I thought there's going to be all these do's and don'ts. And it wasn't sitting with me. Or I have to get up every morning at five and sit down and meditate. And I was lazy. I was a lazy spiritual seeker. And Papaji said the first day, there is nowhere to go and nothing to do. And I'm like, what do you mean? He had no practice for us and no spiritual dogmas. So he didn't oppose any of these things. And I was like, oh, this is my guru. This guy is my teacher. And of course, uh, slowly, slowly, some of your habits start to disappear and they just fall off as you get closer. So, and you become, the more conscious you become, the more aware you become, you may still be drinking or smoking or doing whatever you're doing, but now awareness is there. You're doing what you do with awareness. You're not doing it like a robot. Things change. Advanced spirituality has nothing to do whether you smoke cigarettes or you drink or you have sex. It's a, arriving in this place of fully aware of what your body does, what your nervous system is doing. You have awareness of it. That's very different than when you're asleep and you're acting like a robot. I don't know if this makes sense to you. And sometimes you have to go through extreme discipline before you come to this point. It all depends who goes through what, but that's my realization. I have a couple questions here. I can't seem to quite quit drinking alcohol, even though I seem to suffer because of it. Should I just quit this or keep on drinking and enjoy it? Uh, Nicole, uh, Nicola, Cesar. Nicola, are you there? Let me see where you are. Do you want to talk to me directly? I don't seem like I'm finding you. Can you unmute yourself? All right. Okay, so I have someone here wrote, I can't seem to quit drinking, drinking alcohol, even though it seems it, I suffer, I seem to suffer because of it, should I just quit this or keep or keep on drinking and enjoy it? 